In this video, I will explain how to solve the transportation problem using the Northwest Corner method. So let's check out an example. Let's say we have three factories that produce some good, and we have four cities that have a demand for that good. So for example, factory one has a total supply of 35, so it makes 35 units of this good. Factory two makes 50 units, and factory three makes 40 units. Now, city one has a total demand of 45 units, City 2 has a demand of 20 units, City 3 has a demand of 30 units, and City 4 has a demand of 30 units. Now for this particular example, the total supply, so the total goods produced by these factories, if you add up these values, that turns out to be 125. And we'll find that the total demand among all four cities is also 125. So this is known as a balanced transportation problem. Now, the idea is that we want to meet the demand of each city, but we want to minimize the shipping costs. So within each of these cells in the table, I've shown the shipping costs per unit. So for example, to ship one unit from factory one to city one, that's a shipping cost of $8 per unit. To go from factory one to city two, that has a shipping cost of $6 per unit, and so on. So to solve this problem using the northwest corner method, here's what we do. If you imagine that we draw a compass and we have directions north, south, east, and west, northwest would be in this direction. So all that really means is that it's pointing to the top left. So when we use this method, we're always going to start with the cell in the top left corner of the table. So for this example, that would be this cell right here, which has a shipping cost of $8. So here's what we do. City 1 has a total demand of 45 units. So we're going to fulfill as much of that demand as possible in this cell right here based on whatever the supply is for this factory. So this factory has a supply of 35, so we can use up all 35 of those units to try to fulfill this demand. So once we've used up that 35, we can cross that out because factory one no longer has any more supply. So we met 35 of the total 45 demand, so we can cross out the 45 and make it a 10. So 45 minus 35 means we still have 10 demand left in city one. So because there is more demand to meet, what we do is we then move down one cell. So now we're looking at this cell and we're gonna say, can we meet this remaining demand of 10 using the supply from factory two? So factory two still has a total supply of 50. So we can take 10 of that and we'll write a 10 right here and we'll fill this remaining demand. So that demand has been completely met. So we'll go ahead and subtract 10 from this 50 as well since we just used up 10 of the supply. So that leaves us with 40 left. Now what we'll notice is that the total demand for city one has been met. So that means we can cross out this last cell because we're not going to need to ship any goods through this route because the demand has already been met for city one. Now, one other thing we'll notice is that the total supply for this first row right here has also been exhausted. So we used up all 35 of the units here. So we can cross out all of these cells as well because factory one doesn't have any more supply to supply to any of these cities because all of it went towards city one. So now that we're done with this first column, we can move to this next column, so city two. So the next available cell would be this cell right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna say, okay, how much demand does city two have? Well, that's 20. So let's fulfill as much of that demand as possible using factory two. So we can see factory two still has a supply of 40, so we can meet the total demand of 20 right here. So we'll put a 20 right here, and then we'll reduce the supply of factory two by 20. So 40 minus 20, that takes us down to 20. Now we'll notice that the demand is met for city two. So we'll cross this out and we can also X out this cell because the total demand for city two has already been met. So we don't need to ship any goods through this route right here since the demand is already met. So now we're done with this column, we'll move on to the next column, so city three. So the next available cell is this cell right here. So, so we can see that city three has a total demand of 30. So let's meet as much of that demand as possible using factory two. So factory two has 20 supply left, so we'll go ahead and use up all of that supply. So we'll cross that out and we'll put a 20 right here. Now a total of 20 of this 30 demand has been met, so we'll reduce the demand by 20, so that will become a 10. Now we can see there's still 10 demand to be left, so that means we need to move down to the next cell. And we want to try to meet the remaining demand using the supply from factory three. So factory three has a supply of 40, so we'll take 10 from there, we'll reduce the supply to 30, and we'll put a 10 right here so we can meet this remaining demand. So now the total demand has been met. So city three is now done as well. We were able to meet the total original demand of 30. So since city three is done, we'll move to the next column, which is city four. So the next available cell would be this cell right here. 
we can see that we've already exhausted the supply of factory two. So we actually just need to cross this cell out and then we'll move to this very last cell. So we can see the total demand for city four is 30, which we can meet using this supply right here. So we'll use the remaining supply and we'll put 30 units right here in this cell and that meets the demand for city four. So this is our final answer. So to find the total shipping cost, here's what we do. We simply take the total units in each of the allocated cells and we multiply it by the unit shipping price. So for this one, we would do 35 times eight. So let's write that down. Then we're going to add to that the next allocated cell. So that would be this 10 units right here with a shipping cost of $9 per unit. So we'll say 10 times nine. So let's write that down. And the next allocated cell would be this one right here. So 20 units times a total shipping cost of $12. And then the next allocated cell would be 20 times $13. And then we have 10 times $16. And then lastly, we have 30 times $5. So if you punch all of this into a calculator, it comes out to $1,180. So that is our final answer for this one. So that's how we can solve the transportation problem using the Northwest corner method.